Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how we handle molecular weight ladders and markers within our Fretix 1D analysis software. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be guiding you through how we handle molecular weight markers within our Fretix 1D software and how we apply them to our analysis. Now, obviously molecular weight markers and standards are crucial part of the 1D analysis workflow. They give you a standard to compare all your other bands to. So if you're using protein or DNA or RNA, they give you a known quantity, a known size in either kilodaltons or base pairs to then extrapolate across all your different bands to then quantify those bands in terms of sizing and then potentially lead to the identity of the protein or DNA or RNA that is contained within that band. So really handy for providing a fixed point, a known standard. So within our Fretix 1D software, we have a number of pre-built molecular weight templates, a no number of known standards. So we've got some from BioRad, Invitrogen, Thermo Fisher, Promega, Nev, those kind of people. Now, we have built these using the information that's freely available on the manufacturer's website, but I do want to highlight that these could change at any time. So please check that if you're using one of these pre-built templates, um, that they are still relevant to the batch that you've got. So one way to check or the, the way to check would be to select one and then apply it to your lane and make sure that you've got the right number of standards, the right number of steps within your molecular weight ladder and that they're displaying the correct value for each step that you would expect from the manufacturer's instructions. So if you were using molecular weight ladders that you've developed within your own lab as part of your own SOP, we do also accommodate those as well and give users the ability to create their own templates. So to do that, if you come here and click on edit templates, you can give you can click on new template and let's say let's call this demo two as I've already got a demo. I can select the units that my molecular weight is going to be displayed in. So am I using proteins? within the kilodalton range, so then I will need to use kilodaltons. Am I using RNA or DNA? You know, do I want to use percentage or pH as part of my, you know, in the development of my molecular weight ladder or my standard ladder, what, what units have I done it in? And just make sure that lines up because then your results will be reported in the unit that you've chosen. And then you've got the number of steps, and this is just the number of points, the number of bands you would expect to see as part of your molecular weight ladder. So say if I had 10, um, so I'll just go for a really easy 100, 200, uh, 300. So this would obviously be in kilodaltons because I've got my unit set to kilodaltons over on the side there. 600, 700, 800, 900, uh, oops, 900 and 1,000. So I save that as my demo two select my standard demo 2 that I've just created and then if I left click on the lane the lane label that I want to use that I want to apply this molecular weight ladder to you can see that it's just automatically applied it to that lane so what happens when I left click here is the software runs an automatic band detection which is specifically tuned to identify strong bands because a molecular weight ladder is typically always kind of your strongest bands that are on your your gel or your block and you want to be able to identify those very easily based on being very strong bands and you want the detection for those typically you want the detection parameters for your molecular weight ladder to be very different to the detection parameters that you've used for your other bands of interest because they will be much fainter um, proportionally. So the same settings that would identify your molecular weight bands very well are likely to not identify your unknown sample bands very well and vice versa. So that's why we have two different settings, two different kind of um, parameters for both of those and one of those you don't have the option to be able to change which is the molecular weight ladder. So once we've performed that, once we've added the steps to the ladder, we can then come and check how how well, you know, how smooth our line of best fit, how smooth our curve of best fit that our unknown samples, so all of these bands, are going to be compared to and extrapolated from. Now, 
within our software you do have the ability to use different lines of best fit depending on the molecular weight ladder that you've used so say if you've used uh, a quadratic or, or a log ladder instead of a linear one which is you know the one that i've designed here the fake one that i've designed is very linear you do have the option to change between those and we do support those and then obviously your unknown bands your sample bands will be extrapolated according to that mathematical function rather than assuming a linear function you can view here on the right hand side how the molecular weight ladder has been fit to the bands within the molecular weight ladder lane. So you can see here, if I just move along, that the software automatically finds the most intense pixel within the band, within, you know, the most intense pixel of each band within your molecular weight ladder lane, and then we'll use that point as the reference point to say that this here is 700 kilodaltons and everything that lines up with this uh, everything that lines up with this band is going to be 700 kilodaltons that's where we're placing you know that's where we're placing our line that's where we're taking our measurement from so you can visually check that the the data that you're using to extrapolate your molecular weight sizing does line up with the the physical and the dig digital data that you can see within your sample. We do support different molecular weight ladders on different channels and we do also support multi-lane, uh, multi-molecular weight ladder lanes within the same image. So with, and I'll show you how to do that now. So with our standard still selected, if I left click on this lane where you can see we've got another molecular weight ladder, the same molecular weight ladder again, you'll see that the same automatic detection is ran again against this lane and the bands are identified and you can actually see that when I did that these dark lines here, these grey lines which indicate where your measurements are being taken from across, across your gel that actually just changed slightly so the benefit of having multiple molecular weight marker lanes within the same image, within the same gel is that the software will use both of these points if you've got two or if you've got three you can drop another one in the middle like that it will lie it will join up those points and accommodate mathematically for any curve that's occurred within your gel so if you've got a smiley or a warped gel instead of just presuming that there is a linear line moving from left to right and everything on that line is say a thousand kilodaltons if you join the two up the software can accommodate for any bends, any warping in your gel and still produce an accurate quantification and accurate result. So obviously if I, if my lane had a huge bend in it and came back up, if I had a band that was say not directly aligned with a thousand kilodaltons, I could get an erroneous result for that band. But by using the, the known standards to accommodate for that bend, I can get much more accurate quantification when my when there is a warp gel which means that you might not have to spend time reproducing an experiment uh, therefore producing good quality data without having to well, you know, take up more time to reproduce an analysis as ever thanks for watching and if you'd be interested in trialing a copy of fretix 1d to use with your own data in your own lab please check out the links in the description below